Hey guys, if you're interested in learning exactly how to start a profitable e-commerce store in 2024, this video is for you. We're gonna hop right into it. Hey guys, my name is Chris Morano, founder of Blue Water Marketing, an agency that focuses on scaling e-commerce stores. And you might not be at that scaling point if you're watching this video. And so what I'm gonna break down is the step-by-step -step process to identify whether or not you have a viable product and or brand to scale and bring to a company like Blue Water Marketing. There are many steps to this. A lot of people start with Shopify and what theme to select, but there's more than that because running Facebook ads, running Google ads, hiring influencers, creating an ambassador program, all of these things take a lot of money. And because we've scaled so many stores, we know exactly what to look for in the very beginning. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. So let's get into the first aspect. In the beginning, it's all about identifying your cogs and your margin first. So I say that because we have people all the time reaching out to us. Our first step is to go into our growth map. This is where we start our discovery calls to determine, does your average order value, along with the lifetime value, the quantity, the cost of goods, credit card fees, merchant account fees, shipping costs, filming cost per unit, Facebook management costs, total cost to fulfill and deliver a single purchase or order, is that enough to warrant a successful market campaign? And I say that because many times if you're like, hey, I have the world's best product, but for example, if it costs $49.99, your lifetime value is only like $50, your cost of goods is 29, meaning you have a $20 profit, credit card fees, generally 3%, merchant account fees, we'll just leave that nothing, shipping costs, $3, you only have a 3% gross profit margin that is before paying you or any of your opex costs um, salaries rent health insurance phone bills internet all of that this is just the cost to deliver the product more importantly we also see we have a cost per break even on platform is 1574 and we have a ROAS of 3.18. That is your break even cost to deliver your product in market on Facebook or Instagram or Google. So when you're going through and you're starting to look and a lot of people go right to alibaba.com and let's just look at men's shoes, which I don't recommend doing this. This is for people who are looking to create a brand. You have your wholesale kits and costs, okay, $2.10. What's this average selling for? probably 12, 14, 15 dollars. So you have a $13 margin built into this shoe cleaning kit, but the cost to advertise on Facebook and Google has continued to increase. So the first thing you need to identify and build into as many of your ideas as possible is your margin. That's going to be crucial. From there, we're looking at all these different things, the product cost, et cetera, et cetera. Once we start tacking on a margin percentage, you can see how important it is to have a lower cost. No one will ever be able to deliver a 20% of your break-even ROAS, which is 25.74. It's not going to happen. It will never happen. So going to another client, we can see this client has a phenomenal margin. AOV of 198.48, COGS $28, credit card fees 3% at 576, shipping costs they are using a pick and pack fulfillment center, so it's $10, fulfillment cost $4 percentage, they have a 75.94, 76% gross margin, meaning we need to deliver our Facebook at anything cost per action or cost per purchase less than $150. Now the lifetime value is actually times two because we've identified that every customer over the course of the lifetime will generally buy twice. So we're looking at acquiring customers for less than $150 because they're going to bring in almost $400 of revenue. We go here and we can see in order to get our break even, our 20% margin, we need to be at 1.7. From here we go and we say, okay, they're gonna spend $6,500. Our ROAS target is four, which actually is more than double. I mean, we're just shooting for the stars here. 
bringing in a total revenue of $26,000, 22,000 of gross profit. Projected profit before OPEX is $13,000 with 6,500. 13,244 is actually profit before operating expenses. So we've nailed all of this down and then we're able to project out. From there, we can start to estimate what our revenue is going to look like. We have the e-commerce revenue gross, which is taken from the other formulas, looking at all of these different calculations to give us profit after ad spend and variable costs, which then we can determine e-commerce revenue gross, discounts, giving us total net before OPEX, followed by a number of employees, average salaries, all of these so we can provide a forecasted EBITDA. Now, these things are important because, yes, you're just starting out, but, and I hope I didn't lose you too much in the weeds and the numbers, the critical factor in this is we all have the dream of creating a business that does not suck the life out of us. And the thing we see happening frequently is that e-commerce brands have amazing gross revenues. You can get to a million dollars if you have a good product relatively quickly. What you can't then do is hire people to do the things that you need them to do in order to continue growing because your margins aren't there. One of the ways with all of the attribution that we're starting to find to be extremely valuable is going through and looking at the MER. So in our MER, we're looking at all these different numbers, how much money we're making all the clients on a daily basis, putting our notes in. Over here, we're looking at the marketing efficiency ratio. In this, we're looking at the total Google spend, total Facebook spend, total return, and then an MER, which is the marketing efficiency ratio, which is basically the amount of ad spend with the amount of revenue because certain days, like you can see on January 1st, there was only 244 spent. There's an MER of 32.55. It was because there's a new product drop and everyone went crazy for it. So we're able to see all these variants determining the overall scope of the business and how effective all of this is. So where I'm going with this is it is important to use calculations like this before jumping into an e-commerce venture. I've done it myself, getting a product for three or four dollars. I think I can sell it for 18. 18 minus four is 14. The cost to acquire a new customer or the CAC is the key to this. So unless you're willing to lose money on that first sale, knowing they're gonna purchase four or five, six times, that business model makes sense as long as you have positive cash flow. If you are not willing to lose that first purchase, you need to increase the AOV Really what we're finding is that sweet spot is between like 65 and $200 can still be an impulsive purchase. They don't have to check with the wife or the husband. They can make that buying decision on their own. Once you get into that five, six thousand dollars you need to start looking at funnels. Anything lower than that $50 AOV, you start to potentially have this issue where you are not able to generate enough positive cash flow to sustain a lifetime of an e-commerce store. Eventually, how much you're going to want to pay yourself will outweigh any of the positive revenue generated, and therefore you have a problem. If you have any thoughts, ideas, questions, please leave a comment below. If you guys find e-commerce, Shopify information super relevant to your life, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, putting out content every week to help you guys not only understand marketing and how to do certain things, but also the e-com business side of it, because we are involved with many, many businesses, and I'm looking at numbers every day, talking to people in here. Leave a comment down below, hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.